Well, hello there. It's Beards and Bangers. And today you find me covering a meet that I've been to before, but the nice thing with this is it's slightly different every time you come. So let's have a look round Hook Norton Classics. Welcome to Beards and Bangers. So Hook Norton Classics is a group of very like-minded individuals who meet up. It's free to attend. Uh, we're at the Hook Norton Brewery, the very famous Hook Norton Brewery in North Oxfordshire, just outside Banbury. Um, so you can bring your car along. Any car's welcome. I've come today in Penny the Streetwise. Uh, Tony, who I know, he's come in his BRM, so we'll go and have a look at that in a sec. Now you may be thinking, why have I videoed why am I videoing the same meetup again? Because it happens every month or most months and uh, you know I'm here again. But every time it's a bit different and I think it's really important. You know January is a pretty grotty month isn't it? People are miserable, skint, dark mornings, dark evenings and you know a lot of people don't get out in their cars until March, April time when the weather warms up a bit. But I think it's really important to keep driving those cars. I know some People won't have salt anywhere near their cars and I quite understand that but it's also just great to to get out some meats in this early part of the year and it's only gonna you know there's not too many so it's not too tiring so what we'll do is have a little look round Hook Norton Brewery is yeah, really historic it's a you know it's a traditional brewery um, independent um, it's got a great uh, great sort of bottom to top or top to bottom style brewery whatever the, whatever the technical term is for that and it's also got a really nice um, restaurant as well where I've just had a very nice full English breakfast so let's have a little look around at some of the cars so we've seen this uh, silver MGB GT before I, I remember that remember talking to the owner and it's been um, this is not an MG colour, it's, it's, a, it's a Leyland colour, but it's, it's not standard. But it's a very attractive car and I do like to see it. Here's Penny, she's um, had a bit of a blast over here this morning. More on Penny another day. Um, now this BV8 sounded absolutely lovely when it uh, rolled in a moment ago. So it's obviously got a good handbrake. We're on a bit of a, a slope here as you can see. Uh, and then we've got, you know, modern, some, well, I say modern, it's the same age as same age as a lot of my cars on an 03 plate but it's got this rather nice Porsche um, but I'm heading to something that I really want to show you because I just think it's a delightful little thing so yeah box dress these were very popular uh, a couple of a uh, couple of colleagues had these back in the early 2000s um, yeah very very fond memories of uh, getting onto motorways extremely quickly uh, another BGT here I was chatting to this chap he's got this Ford um, Puma uh, which he uses for sort of rallies and targets, so it's his it's his his his, uh, his special car for that, and he, he he loves it because he can drive like an absolute lunatic, but in a legal fashion. Um, and I do quite like these these early two thousands Fords, so the Puma Cougar. And I, I do I'm going back into the, the mid nineties. I I have got, as some of you know, a bit of a soft spot for the Probe as well. But look at this little thing. I just love Austin A40 Farinas. Um, they are, there's something about these and the Herald, the Herald kind of estate backs. I don't know if they're meant to be called estates, but that's what I'm gonna call them. But I just, I just there's something I just really love about these small, practical cars. Um, let's have a look at it. It's, it's, it's an Austin, of course, that's so got a very Spartan interior. So yeah, very basic. Very basic inside. We've got this lovely, just the styling on these is just so nice. We've got this drop at the back, um, and it is a saloon still because we, we've only got the the, uh, the small boot there, as you can see. But this, this, the shape I really like. The styling, the, the tail lights, just look at those. Really, really nice. Um, and you've got the same at the front with the, the beautiful front uh, light setup as well really is very attractive this looks like a Ford Explorer uh, early 80s one and that's certainly quite something and yeah you look at a European or even a Japanese pickup truck from the same era they're a lot smaller see I'm sure if you I'm sure a lot, there's a lot of Hollywood films and American TV programs set in the more remote parts of the country with cars like this in um, Lovely Beetle here. Now this, this has got a very interesting exhaust on the back. So it's a 66 California look Beetle. Um, if we can have a look at the back of it, I'm not quite sure if we can 
got enough space to see. But yeah, this the exhaust is a really, I don't know if that's standard, we've got a really interesting arrangement there. Um, stainless steel exhaust, so it comes out and then you've got the exit sort of angled back, or angled going out to the side, so really interesting. Of course, we've got our air-cooled engine in the back of these. Now this caught my eye when I was just uh, having a little think about videoing. So, uh, Morris Traveller, Woody, um, and that does look immaculate. That's, that's, I would imagine, had some, some restoration in the past, because this is a, well, I'm not too good on registrations at this, this period, but it's certainly a very early 1960s, from 1950s, so that's a really lovely thing. Great colour, and let's just have a look in at this lost lost badge a badge we don't see anymore last morris badged car was the ital of course <laughs> and we've got some american american might in the corner so we've got a uh, mustang gt here so it's got 4.6 liter v8 same as 194 because of course my 194 zt has got the same engine mustang 4.6 liter uh this looks like a bullet Edition here, it's such a lot of things. I, I will have to own one of these at some point in the future because um, they are seriously nice. Um, now, what is this thing here? I, I don't even know. We've got a Chevrolet pickup truck that's been slammed to the floor. That's that's really. I, I do like these. I really like these F100 here. This is a real classic pickup truck. Look at that, absolutely superb. I didn't didn't hear these coming in. These were here when I got here so I've not heard these things fire up but yeah really really nice to look at indeed and then a, a Princess Anne car for a car very much like what Princess Anne drove so a Reliance Scimitar with a GTE with its uh, fiberglass body paintwork looks really good on this um, I would suspect this has had some work. But yeah, nice. I do like. I do like these. Never driven one, so that's something I'm probably going to have to address at some point because I, I think they're very interesting cars. I believe they've got a Ford um, V6 engine under the bonnet. So yeah, we'd, we'd be very keen to get out in one of these. So if anyone's got one, they'd happy be happily let me drive. Um, Primio's yellow um, MGC. And I am getting this right this morning, so I'm not going to get told off by any of you who are watching. So, yeah, MGC, of course, we can tell at a glance by looking at the bonnet. So, the MGB has got a completely flat bonnet, whereas you've got this slightly raised section here with a little blister in the uh, on the sort of right hand side of the bonnet. So, that's how we can tell an MGC. But I just love this colour. Um, it's, uh, yeah, not as garish as your trophy yellows and. Uh, other uh, Audi yellows and all these other yellows you get, but it's yeah you know, primrose yellow is a very very soft pastely shade. Um, we do like a 75 in this colour as well, as you, as you will have seen at my uh, NEC Classic Motor Show video. Another Puma, so it's very nice to see one of these, another one of these here. Yeah, more on Fords from me, I think this year. And then we've got this Mark V Escort. Now again, this is a car that I. I do like to see because I've had a Mark IV Escort in the past, I had a Mark IV XR3i and I had a Mark V Basic Escort, like a 1.6, something like that. Um, and yeah, they are, you don't see many of these, see a few X, little Mark IVs around, but you don't see many Mark Vs. Um, and that is, that is really, really nice to see that. So yeah, they, they're, of course, this is the last, the last Escort before they started making the Focus. So another Porsche, then this, this rolled in a little while ago, this lovely um, Morris Minor van in this pale grey. Now, this is a colour that's actually back in fashion because there's so many modern or new cars in this colour. But on a, on a Minor van, it just looks really, really nice. Um, Audi TT, here an early Audi TT. That's quite a, I've never actually looked in the engine bay on one of these. That's quite, um, that's quite cramped in there, but that's that's really well presented with some, you know, got a strut, aftermarket strut brace there, stainless steel, um, very nicely welded. 
and then yeah we've definitely we've got some what boost pipes need to cooler pipes there and hoses that have been changed a great big cone filter on the right there that's yeah that and this sounded very nice when it drove in we'll try and peer in the window because of course this is a mark one tt it's got the same air vents that i put in penny i don't know how if you can quite see those but yeah it's quite a nice quite a nice thing to look at i'll have a little wander and uh, go and find the other section where there's some more classics to go and look at so another beetle in a classic range is this the v8 one i heard a minute ago because there was a v8 one roared in and it sounded absolutely magnificent i've got a feeling that's a diesel but uh it was very nice sounding um lotus elan so that's nice to see one of those yeah lovely in the green and then we've got some some more niceness around here jaguar xf these are yeah these are fast becoming modern classics and then look we've got one of my favorite cars ever the dolomite sprint um gotta remember what color blue this is but i can't remember off the top of my head but yeah just look how lovely these things are very very fast revolutionary saloon um first mass produced 16 valve engine 127 brake horsepower i think in these um so for the time when these were launched what 75 76 uh it was a quick car definitely definitely uh yeah well beating another austin a40 freener we shan't look around that indeed we've just seen one of them but yeah lovely lovely looking things um and then we've got this which i saw drive in and i couldn't quite work out what it was sometimes the white it's a, it's a, a voxel i think of some sort um no it's not it's a ford console it's a ford console and how lovely is that um not too good on what fords and voxels of this era it's obviously had some retrimming we've actually got some very modern got some very modern seats in there um, which actually work really well but what an absolutely immaculate car and then next to it we've got a tr4 in red which is Look at that walk, you actually get in this one. Walnut dash, absolutely beautiful. Lovely seats as well. Really, really attractive cars. And I do like my TR6s, but I have to say the, the, the sort of fours and fives are definitely prettier. Now this is a car we've seen before. This is Tony's BRM. So this is having a little bit of work done. Hopefully this is gonna be at the NEC Resto show along with my penny in a few weeks time um i'm not the only person to have put a big exhaust on a brm because tony's done exactly that i need to speak to him actually because i don't know if he's done the zr 160 setup which my bram now has we will do an episode on bram fairly soon um and then he will be there'll be a brief glimpse of bram in the channel update that i'll produce in the next few days um Yes, yeah, so there's Tony's lovely BRM. Really, this one is very well presented, but he's still going to have some paint correction done and get it ceramic coated. So that is good. And then, yeah, we had, a, had about four minis turn up, I think. Well, four classic minis and then uh, a modern as well. So we've got this mini estate. I want to get the right. It's a clubman. So what's that? Clubman. Uh, countryman isn't it I think in that setup um, yeah I have done a review of one of these so you can check that video out I'll put a link up in the up in the top uh, another mini mini van here um, on a V plate so what's the early 80s and we've got this lovely um, metallic green uh, Mayfair automatic which was very very quiet when it drove in very very nice sounding little thing and then a orange 1275 gt now i just think these look so purposeful they just they look like one they want to move forward all the time so really nice looking little cars 1398 yeah. yeah so border this has got a board out um a series engine so it's 1398 cc so which i think is pretty much i think you can go a bit higher but then you no but you risk um you risk the the wall between each um 
cylinder cracking because you end up with, there's not much meat left in the block. Um, here's our modern mini. That's yeah, that's that's quite an aggressive looking thing. Not entirely sure what one it is, but a um, bit modern, for, bit modern for my my knowledge base. But it's a very attractive, very attractive beastie. That's for sure. And I bet it sounds pretty mean. I bet you anyone it's got a supercharger. No turbo. It's a turbo. Ah, turbo. So it's still going to be mean, and I imagine it drives. Yeah. Pretty nicely. There's only 2,000 made. Really? The numbers on the side, that are. Ah, look, so. That's, that's the number. So only 2,000. What, what are these editions called? Uh, Mini GP. GP. So it's the, this is number 1363 of 2,000. So turbocharged Mini GP. Lovely, great big wing on the back we do we do have older minis as well you do you have got Colin's older. got an older mini and so have I so I think it's fair to say the people who own this car are mini enthusiasts yes I have a Mayfair with a flat battery this morning oh so, well, time of year for that yeah I've got a Mark 2 rally car with an engine rebuild oh my the oh my soul <laughs> so they got a, they got a three three four year old mini but they've also got a Mayfair and a Mark 2 to hear this viewers a Mark 2 rally car I'm just thinking Paddy Hopkirk now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you Thank keep thinking Paddy Hopkirk. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now I've got a car here that's definitely growing with the Audi um, S3 or A3. Um, do like those. We've got a Land Rover Series ooh, 2 here as well. Classic green with the cream body on it and we'll have a little wander up here because there's some interesting revage going on so it wouldn't be an oxfordshire car show without more moggies so we've got one here that's been restored and one that's that may be restored in the future so a lovely pattern but i should do, i do like a car that looks like that because it's it's used yeah slightly slightly different wheels on there but yeah lovely things we can't have a car show without seeing Morris Miners, it's a car show, car meet rather. Um, Fiat 500, definitely a future classic. Honda Jazz, not quite so sure about that, but um, now this thing's just, this thing's been revving up and sounds really quite nice. That's why everyone has gathered round it, because it was making an absolutely lovely noise a moment ago. We shall, we shall return to that one in a sec. Fisher Fury. 1.6 K series. 1700. Ah. So Fisher Fury. You get a little bit of variety of engines. Oh, they're going to open. That's nice. Going to have a little look. So a cross flow engine rather than the K series. Um, <laughs> So two great big Webers or Delorto? Delortos. And uh, yeah, very, what looks like a very free flowing exhaust manifold as well. So I imagine this is quite fun to drive. Denny's, um, the car's tuning a little bit more. Um, it's still fun to drive. But it's still fun to drive. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And a loving owner as well, who's giving it a bit of a, a bit more effort than I, we can see. <laughs> a bit more effort than I did, that's for sure. But yeah, I've, I have seen one of these in the workshop, but um, not this particular engine variant. But yeah, nice to see a Fisher Fury. And then got a Mark IV Gold, Mark IV, Mark III, Mark IV Gold Cabrio. Volks, a couple of Volkswagen transporters. So, what's that, a T3, 4, something like that. And then we've got a T6, I think, here. Um, I always forget what these Suzuki's are. They're they're like a Vitara-based car, X30, X90. Yeah, you do see them about quite a lot. Very nice W123 Mercedes just coming in there. We won't leap on them now. We've got a Rover 100 114 GTA here. You may someone I know has got one of these um, as a restoration product. So it pr project product. Uh, restoration project uh, is a car that you may see on my channel at some point um, 
And we took, we took, given that this is the middle of January, it is pretty cold. We've actually got a nice few cars here. The um, Hook Northern Brewery has has some old old dray horses, so they they occasionally get shipped off to shows in this lorry here. Another Land Rover there. I don't think these are part of the show. I think these are staff cars. But uh, we've got this rather interesting beach buggy, hot rod. I don't know what you call it. Beetle here. Couple of Focus STs. Won't dwell on those because we may we should see a Focus ST. So it's an RS on the right, ST on the left. I won't say too much about the STs, but we'll, we will quite possibly see one on the channel very soon. Um, some kind of hot rod thing. Won't even try and describe that without talking to the owner, but it has got a V8 badge down the side, so I imagine it sounds very nice. Another Mini Speedwell um, conversion by the looks of it. And then a... a, a, a I'm going to say Morgan, but it's not a Morgan, is it? It's something else, some kind of other kit car. It's not a Marlin, hasn't got the right windscreen surround, but interesting nonetheless. Um, Sunbeam Rapier on some definite aftermarket alloy wheels. Looks quite, looks quite fun. Again, another car that I won't try and describe without someone who knows <laughs> what it's about. Because it's, yeah, very interesting looking thing studebaker i think it might be and then look a k10 micro so on a what's an h plate a 1991 um yeah you don't see many of these automatic as well my mother would love this um yeah k10 micro in red that's a real that's a real that's really nice to see one of these here we've got a jaguar xj8 of some description looking making the micro look very small um another jaguar next to it um and this is this a d-type it's a very nice jaguar is all i'll say um pretty sure that's a d-type in which case i won't get too close in case i scratch it or something because they are incredibly valuable cars and sound absolutely lovely another another british bit of motoring folklore here so an aston martin look at that engine six liter v12 didn't didn't hear that coming in but it but it sounds glorious another mini and then an alpha brera is this one in red with clover leaf on the side that's very nice uh mx5 mark two yeah nearly got it right nearly got it wrong nearly but then got it right in the end yeah mx5 mark ii i do what i want to get out in one of these because um it's a car that i've never driven and i do need to compare it to an mgtf at some point <laughs> uh, this looks like very much like a standard eight to me i was talking about these cars yesterday actually to someone who's a triumph owner and i do find these very attractive very cute have a little close up on the standard badge because it's not a badge we see that often and then we've got some, some more this is the last race it's a short video today we've got a ford hot rod of some description ford modified car very yeah very very skeletal but again i bet it sounds nice i think i was having my breakfast when these all came in um gt Old English white, I think. Is it old English white or is it slightly slightly different white? Uh, no, no clues on the windscreen, but uh, yeah, beautiful car. Late, very late MGTF here. In, was it pearl black, I think? And that's 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 a nice looking thing. Um, Lance, look at this Lance here. Now these are seriously beautiful cars. Just look at the lines. I don't know how well you can see. I can't get, can't get quite side on because the MGTF's in the way, but... What beautiful cars these are. Fulvia 3, isn't that lovely? Yeah, do like Lancia Fulvia on beards and bangers. Again, a car that I need to drive. Something American next to it. So it's got a, what have we got? A six, straight six engine with an Edelbrock carburetor. So that, this will sound interesting. 
yeah some kind of chevrolet and then ah oh, this is the v8 range rover that came in a little while ago and just sounded absolutely glorious and we've got a mark one mx5 miata unos call it what you will here with the pop-up headlights that's the difference and then an mgf so slightly different to the tf of course with its slightly more reflective face shall we say we don't say sad we'll say reflective and then we've got this reliant Reliant Scimitar SS1 and this looks like it's being used for some kind of rally because it looks looks quite well weathered but very nice again these very these Reliance are very attractive cars and then we've got a TVR on the end I'm still waiting to drive one of these um, I'm waiting to experience it's very you're very cramped very narrow um, footwell so you feel very costed in these. I have sat in one, but I've never driven one. But I would like to. If anyone's got a TVR, they'd let me have a, a go in. Then please do get in touch. There's a few stragglers coming, so we'll catch up with those. And then that will be the end of today's video. A real brief video from this early 2024 car meet. There's a few still coming in. So yes, it's only a, it's a quick meet up. It's a couple of hours. So not, you know, it's not a show. It's not a big, big set out thing. But look, we've got another Primrose Yellow B GT. So we saw a, a Primrose Yellow MGC GT. We've now got a Primrose Yellow MGB GT coming in. And then behind that, we've got an early 80s Mini that's been slightly Monte Carlo-fied. It looks very nice on its Mini lights and with its roof rack and had a bit of styling done on the front as well. Not a, not a 1980, so what am I talking about? 1960s. Getting my registration numbers the wrong way around. Registration number dyslexia, I do apologise. So yeah, it's not been made to the period. It is a, it's a proper mini minor from the early 60s. Another glorious bit of uh, British engineering is coming towards us. We've got a Sunbeam. I don't think it's a Tiger, is it an Alpine? It's a Tiger. So we'll, we'll, we'll stand here and listen to this. This will sound glorious because of course it's the Alpine with the V8 engine up front and there's a Triumph TR three or four or five behind it. So we'll stop to stop here and watch these drive past because these will these will also sound very nice. Here we go, listen to that. Lovely V8. Not a car you see very often. From a car and then a TR, what is it? It's a four, so it's just a, it's a, just a plain old four, not a four A with the independent suspension. It's the, the four with I think the wishbone, double wishbone suspension. And we have got a Ferrari. Getting quite well. This is a really good turnout for spinning around. Really good turnout for the middle of January. It's really nice to see. I think it's, we've got a slight gap in the weather. It's not quite as cold today as it has been earlier in the week, and as it will be next week um so yeah fortuitous so here comes the ferrari i'll just spin you around again look at that that's a beautiful thing it's just gliding in and we've got an impreza behind it as well it's a really good that's why i love hook norton classic because it's just a chilled out meet and you get so many different cars it's, you know all ages all types all stars even there's even some push bikes here which i can't find now that have little motors on them so they're they're even they were interesting mark one disco these will be the last two cars we look at is it a td4 or td5 tdi can't remember what the engine that's got then and then we've got some kind of austin And I'll show you that from a distance because I'm, I want to keep the powder dry on vintage Austins. You will find out why fairly soon. There's a few of my secret love here. So BMW, was it three? Three T5 coupe. That's an E36 coupe here. I think I might have seen this one before. At Gaiden, I've got a feeling. It's a 328 coupe. And then we've got, it's a four series, I think. 
No, it's an M3. And that's a very, very nice M3 indeed. Look at that. Another B turned up, and then we've got a Jag XK. XKR, no less. Very nice. Very nice to see one of these. Again, another car that I really, really, really want to drive. Really, really, really want to drive. Now, I tricked you there. It's not a, not a Civic Type R. It's a Volvo 850. And it's rather nice. Kind of aquamarine colour. And then raised up Land Rover and a couple of Mark 1 Disco. We saw one of these coming in a moment ago and a modern Range Rover on the end there. And I think, yeah, there's not much else coming in. I mean, it is cold though. Yeah. It's very lovely, that Alpha, very pretty thing. Love this colour. Look at this lovely Ford Anglia. I just love this. My father had one of these. I just love that rear, that rake on the rear windscreen. Very nice. Very, very nice detail indeed. 